Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Here's John and Heidi. Today is a special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? I thought you would never ask. It is Friday. It's the 18th day of March. Today is National Awkward Moments Day. Hmm. Let's not have any of those. <laughs> National Biodiesel Day today. National Lacy Oatmeal Cookie Day. You you Lacey kinda like Lacy Oatmeal Cookie. You like oatmeal cookies, don't I you? I do like oatmeal cookies. See, I always grab one, I take a bite, and I'm like, oh, that's not a chocolate chip cookie. Oh, I do like oatmeal yeah. cookies, but I, I don't, don't mind lacy oatmeal. Cookies. I don't mind them, I just don't expect them, and then I get them and I'm like, ah, not what I thought. Uh, National Sloppy Joe Day today, and National Supreme Sacrifice Day today. And that's another thing I'm not a fan of, that a lot of people seem to be a sloppy jokes. Oh. (laughs) Just Um, don't like them. I have, uh, joining us once again, best-selling author Mark Greeny. We've talked to him in the past. This guy is such a cool guy. He's got a new book out in his Gray Man series. It's number 11, I believe. It's called Sierra Six. And his first book, The Gray Man... Uh, the first one in the series, is going to be turned into a movie with Ryan Gosling now. So oh, that's cool. He's got some cool stuff going on. We'll chat about that and much, much more all coming up. At BetterCreditCards.com, our mission is to help you get a better credit card. Why pay more interest than you need to? We have cards with amazing points and perks. If you're not a point person and just want the lowest interest rate, you can find those too at BetterCreditCards.com. You can also find credit cards designed to help you build your credit. BetterCreditCards.com wants to help you get a better credit card. Give yourself a little credit at BetterCreditCards.com. That's BetterCreditCards.com. Now, surveys and studies and such brought to you by BetterCreditCards.com. New study says most children under the age of five get way too much screen time. Research conducted through the University of Calgary found that Although the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends children under two avoid any technology except for video chatting, and kids between two and five should have just one to two hours of electronic time per day, they found in actuality just one in four children under two and one in three children aged two to five meet those guidelines. Everybody else way over that. Yeah. The analysis evaluating nearly 90,000 children worldwide found only 36% of children two to five were limiting their screen time to an hour or less. Past studies showed, (laughs) easy for me to say, past studies showed excessive screen time can lead to developmental delays, including language and sociability. Uh, It also associates with childhood obesity and worsening mental health. Researchers say their findings need uh, a little more information, but they're they're trying to hopefully get narrowed in on what they can do to make things better. I'm amazed at the number of little kids I see with their, these screens well and i see like little kids that know how to use these things way better than me and that makes me jealous (laughs) surveys and studies and such brought to you by bettercreditcards.com it's bernie carrick former new york city police commissioner if you own a gun you need to check out stopboxusa.com the safest solution to keep a firearm in your home and get instant reliable access to that gun it's an awesome weapon retention product especially if you have little kids at home or frequent visitors get access to your gun in under a second stopbox is the safest solution to keep a firearm in your home. Use discount code RADIO to save 10% at StopBoxUSA.com. You need to check out StopBoxUSA.com. Did you know? Brought to you by RadioTravelGroup.com. Heidi, did you know? Scientists say they've been able to determine that the asteroid that spelled doom for dinosaurs hit Earth in spring. So they know that's what time it hit in spring. A team from uh, uh, Uppsala University in Sweden said that it was a spring day 66 million years ago when an asteroid 12 kilometers wide hit Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula, leading to an extinction that killed off about three-quarters of Earth's species, including dinosaurs. That, by the way, made way for mammals, eventually humans, to become dominant. They based their study on bones from three paddle fishes. That's how they have it spelled out. Wouldn't it just be three paddle fish? Uh, That died in North Dakota within 30 minutes of the impact that happened... 3,500 kilometers away. Yeah. I don't know how they know any of this. Okay, thanks, Charlie. I'm going to be able to sleep better tonight. <laughs> I know that. All right. Did you know? Well, now we do. We don't know everything, but we know this. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. Now, big screen, little screen, brought to you by ChannelSurferTV.com. Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds, amazing couple, by the way. They're so I, cute. I think, yeah, and uh, they're stepping up to help refugees uh, that are forced to flee their homes in Ukraine. Uh, they shared social media posts showing, here's what we're doing, here's how we're doing it. Anyway, I put a link to that. 
uh, United Nations refugee donation link. It's in the show notes if you're interested in working with Ryan Reynolds and his wife on on helping out. Samuel L. Jackson, also think he's really funny. He believes there should be an Academy Award for the most popular movie. He said he's tired of criticism of studios, blockbusters, particularly superhero films, insisting that movies are valid, they bring audiences to theaters, people like those, but they never win Oscars. There should be a uh, an Oscar every year for the most popular movie. I, I don't think he's all off base on that. I think he's That's right. That's true. Yeah. And Angela Bassett was so shocked that she forgot to thank one of her children. She took home an award for Outstanding Actress in a Drama Series for her work in 911. But during her speech, she th- thanked a bunch of people but forgot to say her son's name. After Afterwards, she felt awful can you imagine how bad that was did you think her other children i don't know if she has other children that is big screen little screen brought to you by channel surfer tv.com the vegas travel center is offering three days and two nights accommodations to vegas they'll completely waive the package price plus you get tickets to your choice of activities as well as meals jump on this now obviously a deal like this isn't going to last when they're gone they're gone so don't miss out just call 605-210-5220 and they'll get you set up for a great getaway call now for this special radio offer 605-210-5220 that's 605-210-5220 now your scoop of the day comes your way courtesy of bettercreditcards.com and it's established fact that ownership of a certain pet contributes to better all better overall health so they're saying by having pets, you, you're healthier. Think I of agree with that. Physical benefits to those uh, miles that you've covered walking your dog. <clears throat> <laughs> I've been telling Heidi, we should go for a walk with I dog. I just think just emotional health in general. Scientists it's... are now saying pets can also be good for your brain, though. A new yeah. study found that your dog, your cat, or other long-term pet companion could delay memory loss and other cognitive declines Ah, people see that don't have pets. Pet ownership was found to be especially beneficial for working verbal memory, such as memorization, according to the University of Michigan study. It's not just cats and dogs, by the way. People in the study also benefited from caring for rabbits, hamsters, birds, fish, and reptiles. Owning a household pet for five years or more was shown to produce the most benefit. So they're saying uh, if you have a pet long-term That helps your brain long term, which is kind of cool. And whether it's in a new purse, a pair of shoes or a bag of beef jerky, at some point you've probably come across a little packet that says silica gel. Do not eat. Yes. It's a little packet that people put in there to absorb water to kind of help during their transition moving across the uh, the world. Most of us are quick to toss it out. The next time you see one, you might want to hang on to it. There's a number of other uses for that thing, such as you might ask, Heidi, such as I'm glad you asked if your windows tend to fog up put the package on the sill if you have an expensive camera or video equipment throw one of those in your camera bag uh here's a biggie if your cell phone gets wet throw it in a plastic bag with a silica packet or two or 12 if you got them damp luggage you guessed it drop a couple of these inside with your razors to extend their life and why not preserve your precious memories drop the silica in a box of old photos it'll help them from getting moldy Yeah, we just throw those things away. Not anymore. I'll be digging them out of your dumpster even. So, well, maybe not that. That is the scoop of the day. It comes your way, courtesy of BetterCreditCards.com. Aloha. Are you ready to enjoy a little slice of paradise? GMDVacations.com is a family-owned, professionally managed vacation rental in sunny Kauai, Hawaii. Your family will absolutely love the area, and the vacation rental has room for up to six guests. Why stay in hotel rooms when you can have your own area at a vacation rental from GMDVacations.com? Visit Hawaii with us and make your trip to this tropical paradise one to remember. On Facebook and Instagram, online at GMDVacations.com. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. Our guest today is best-selling author Mark Greeny. He's got a new book out called Sierra Six. He's also got a book that's being turned into a movie and a lot of amazing things going on. Mr. Greeny, how are you, sir? I'm doing great, John. How are you? I am fantastic, but man, you're doing amazing. you got this new book, Sierra Six, we'll talk about in a minute. And then you've also got a movie that's coming out based on one of your books, and it's starring Ryan Gosling and many others. That's pretty exciting. Tell me about that. Yeah, the first book in my Gray Man series, of which the, the new book, Sierra Six, is number 11, but way back in book one was called The Gray Man. It came out in 2009, and ever since then, it's sort of been bouncing around in Hollywood, and slowly uh, it started to get a little bit of traction, and the Russo brothers, who wrote uh, several of the Marvel films and directed them, uh, they uh, wrote the screenplay and they directed it. And yeah, it has Ryan Gosling, Chris Evans, Anna DeArmas, 
Billy Bob Thornton, and a re- really, really great cast. Well, you've got an amazing story, and they've got the amazing cast that Hollywood had put together. I think this is going to do really, really, really well for you guys. I hope so. It's going to be out on Netflix, and July is what I'm hearing. It's going to be the release. Sometime in July is going to be the release date. And uh, they spent $200 million uh, producing this film, so they have high hopes for it. And they hope to turn it into a franchise where they make more of the Gray Man books into films. That would be really, really cool. And that on its own would be enough for us to have a pretty successful interview here. But in addition to that, you also have a new book out. It's called Sierra Six. Tell me a little bit about this latest book. Yeah, it's Sierra Six. It's, as I said, number 11 in the series. And it's about my hero, Port Gentry, both as a young man, as a CIA paramilitary officer and fighting in Pakistan against the terrorists. And then you see him 12 years later in the present where he's a freelance intelligence asset and he's in, he's in India, and he sees a, a ghost from that uh, tragic mission from 12 years ago and realizes that you know there's a new timeline and a new ticking clock and, and a new objective. So it's basically two 80,000-word novels uh, woven into one with a lot of intrigue and action. Again, this is one of the books from the, the Gray Man series, Sierra 6. If I read just this, am I going to be lost? Do I kind of need to start at the beginning, or how does that work? Yeah, it's super important to me to make every book I write a standalone because you can't expect people to go buy 10 other books before they get to this one. So uh, if, if you haven't read a single Gray Man novel, you could pick this up. And uh, actually, this is a good one to start with because it does show him as, as younger than you see him in any of the other books. And then it also shows him in the present, so you get that feel. And it definitely explains who's who and what's what, and it's it's 100% standalone novel. You've got your very own series, the Gray Man series, that's done extremely well. But in addition to that, you had the opportunity to write with Tom Clancy on his final books and to keep his book series alive. Let's talk about how that process worked, and how were you selected to do that? Um, it's, it's a, that's a good question, how I was selected. It's funny. we had Tom Clancy and I had the same editor, and I'd only put out two little paperback novels at that point. Um, yes, The Gray Man was already optioned in Hollywood, but I was, you know, hardly a household name or hardly, you know, I don't even know if I warranted <laughs> the opportunity that was given to me. But they asked me if I'd be interested in co-authoring with Tom. And I went up to Baltimore and met him, and we did three books together. And he passed away, sadly, just days after the third book that we did, which is called Command Authority, that came out in 2013. And then really quickly, his family asked me if I would be interested in continuing the Jack Ryan series. So I wrote uh, four more Jack Ryan novels. So I wrote seven in six years. It was a very wild ride, but it's an incredible opportunity for me. And what is the process like to go from writing a Gray Man book to a Jack Ryan book and back to a Gray Man book? Is that difficult to do? And what is that process like? It's I found it less hard than I thought it was going to be because, uh, you know, you, you spend six months in one world and then you flip into another and it's actually good. If I, if I just wrote gray man novels or if I just wrote Jack Ryan novels, I think that would actually be harder than having that, uh, sort of a change in tone, a different set of characters, a different set of problems. I mean, there's definitely similarities. It's definitely the same genre, but they they were distinct enough to where it was kind of a easy, uh, switch to flip well this is very exciting stuff thank you very much for taking the time to chat with us again congratulations on the new book sierra six also congratulations on the new movie that's coming out this summer and all of the success you're having that's fantastic thank you so much john i appreciate that Again, our guest today, best-selling author Mark Greeny. His new book, Sierra Six, is out now. I'll throw a link to it in the show notes for today at johnandheidyshow.com. At bettercreditcards.com, our mission is to help you get a better credit card. Why pay more interest than you need to? We have cards with amazing points and perks. If you're not a point person and just want the lowest interest rate, you can find those too at bettercreditcards.com. You can also find credit cards designed to help you build your credit. BetterCreditCards.com wants to help you get a better credit card. Give yourself a little credit at BetterCreditCards.com. That's BetterCreditCards.com. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Some cats are allergic to humans. So like Heidi is allergic to cats. Well, there's some cats that would also be allergic to you. Isn't that weird? That is weird. Yeah. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Raccoons have four times more sensory cells in their paws than most mammals. So it allows them to see with their hands and get images of objects they touch without even looking at them. Hmm. 
Hmm. Oh, very cool. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Being in love makes you a less productive person, according to researchers. You think? That is my we problem. We needed a study. That's my problem. You're always asking me why I don't get all my work done during the day. I'm just longing. You're I'm just staring so at you longingly. You're so in love. You just so can't in love focus. with you. Yeah, I can't even. Yeah. That's the. And that's, I noticed you it. get all of your work done, which is kind of. <laughs> hmm. Uh, fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? The sound of Darth Vader's breathing in Star Wars was made with scuba regulator. Oh, that's funny. And our final fun fact for you, What's Heidi. That, John? The symbol popular known today as a hashtag or the pound sign is technically called technically an octothorpe. The octo means eight, referring to the points around the outside edges. So like yeah. the little tic-tac-toe, octothorpe. That is today's l- whole long list of fun facts. Now you know. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. It's Bernie Carrick, former New York City Police Commissioner. If you own a gun, you need to check out StopBoxUSA.com, the safest solution to keep a firearm in your home and get instant, reliable access to that gun. It's an awesome weapon retention product, especially if you have little kids at home or frequent visitors. Get access to your gun in under a second. StopBox is the safest solution to keep a firearm in your home. Use discount code RADIO to save 10% at StopBoxUSA.com. You need to check out StopBoxUSA.com. Now, the question of the day comes your way, courtesy of radiotravelgroup.com. Heidi, here's the question. And I, we've done this long enough. I'm not going to explain it anymore because, like, I've been explaining it. And then you're always making fun of me going, I think people probably figure out what we're doing now. So uh, I have it posted on our Facebook page, too, if you wanted to answer. If you've already saw it there and you're coming here to get the answer, here it is. First, the question. 11% of households have these under at least one bed. What are they, Heidi? 11% of households have these under at least one bed. Under what are they? Bed. I would guess a teenager's bed, uh, if I was going to guess. I'm going to say clothes. No. Probably more than 11% have that, but dirty dishes. Oh. Yeah. Ew. Like they, they put a slide of glass under there, play it under something under there. So yeah, 11% of households have dirty dishes under at least one bed. That is the question of the day. It comes your way, courtesy of radiotravelgroup.com. The Vegas Travel Center is offering three days and two nights accommodations to Vegas. They'll completely waive the package price, plus you get tickets to your choice of activities as well as meals. Jump on this now. Obviously, a deal like this isn't going to last. When they're gone, they're gone. So don't miss out. Just call 605-210-5220, and they'll get you set up for a great getaway. Call now for this special radio offer, 605-210-5220. That's 605-210-5220. Now some weird news brought to you by WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com, a Scottish woman who rediscovered a bank account that she kind of forgot about. 60 years ago. No way. Was surprised to learn that her $3 balance has ballooned to over how much do you suppose in 60 years? 60 years. Yeah, $3.35 is what she started with and it has I'm going to say 1500 bucks. No, not even close. $335. Wow. Yeah. 74-year-old Carol Allison grew up in the Philippines. She was visiting her grandmother in Scotland when she was 6. And uh, when the older woman helped her open a bank account at Trustee Savings Bank, Grandma hung on to the bank book over the years, and it was returned to Allison when her grandmother died in 1969. She now lives in Scotland, recently came across the bank book when she was cleaning up her house. She went to the bank and was pleasantly surprised to find out, well, the account is still here, and that $3.35 that you put in back in the 1960s is now $335. That's pretty cool. She's planning to find out if the other two bank books she found at the same time bring any further unexpected windfall. How cool is that? But it, you'd think it'd be more over that amount of time. Weird News brought to you by WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com. John and Heidi. Time now for the list brought to you by BetterCreditCards.com. This was shared with me. It's the perfect list for a Friday. It's workplace emails translated. So, I'm just checking in. What that really means is, hey, you told me you'd you'd have this by now. Um, Sorry to bother you really means, hey, just do your job. Um, Also, uh, emails translated. I just want to make sure we're on the same page is I worry you don't understand what I told you. (laughs) Next, I feel bad for making you do this. They don't really feel bad. Uh, This was helpful. That means it would have been a lot more helpful two weeks ago. Sorry if I somehow missed your email. Which really means we both know you never even sent the right. email. Perhaps there was a misunderstanding means you, you probably weren't listening to me. Um, I suppose that's one way to go about it. Means stop improvising and just do it means the way I told that's you. that's not what you're supposed to be doing. Sorry if my instructions were unclear. Uh, that one says, 
are you a moron? <laughs> mm, Heidi says that to me a lot. There's more. It is the list. You can find it in the show notes for today at johnandheidyshow.com. Aloha. Are you ready to enjoy a little slice of paradise? GMDVacations.com is a family-owned, professionally managed vacation rental in sunny Kauai, Hawaii. Your family will absolutely love the area, and the vacation rental has room for up to six guests. Why stay in hotel rooms when you can have your own area at a vacation rental from GMDVacations.com? Visit Hawaii with us and make your trip to this tropical paradise one to remember. On Facebook and Instagram, online at GMDVacations.com. Now, the quote of the day comes your way, courtesy of insurancechicken.com. It's an anonymous quote today. I'm always amazed at how many anonymous quotes there are because it's usually something really good. And you'd think that somebody, when they're writing down the quote, they would have written down who said it too. Right. (laughs) Wouldn't you think? You would think. All right. Here's the anonymous quote. There is one word that describes people that don't like me. Okay. Irrelevant. (laughs) (laughs) I would say wrong. Oh, oh, well, that could be two. Then there would be two words. (laughs) I think that's really good. Sometimes I do think people need to think that way. You know, there are people who get really worried. I mean, everybody's going to have somebody that likes you and somebody that doesn't. Doesn't matter. There are some people who get really, really worried about what other people think. And at the end of the day, why does it matter to you what other people think? Right. There are some things where maybe that should matter. But for the most part, it doesn't Agreed. matter. So I like that little quote, even though it's anonymous. I'm going to claim it. I said that. Okay, <laughs> I didn't really. It's your quote of the day. Comes your way, courtesy of insurancechicken.com. John and Heidi. This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by the John and Heidi Show. That sounds kind of funny, but it's true. Go to your local radio station and ask them to start carrying the John and Heidi Show. Here's the best part. They can carry the show for free. They play a couple commercials, but it doesn't cost them anything every month. So if you know a radio station that could use a little bit of help, send them our way. Send them to johnandheidyshow.com. Again, johnandheidyshow.com. We would love to do a radio program in your community. Then you could listen to the podcast and listen to us on the radio. John and Heidi. We always like to wrap things up around here with good news, and I think this is good news. Comes your way courtesy of radiotravelgroup.com. Uh, while planning a recent trip to London from France, Eva Fitzner and Jessica D. Cosmo didn't realize they would have a double proposal on an ice rink. They didn't think that was going to be part of their itinerary. After three years together, Fitzner thought it was time to pop the question. What she didn't know was that DeCosmo had the same idea. Oh. And also brought along an engagement ring. Once they were on the ice rink, Fitzner got down on one knee and proposed. Immediately after, DeCosmo said yes, and the tables turned. DeCosmo pulled out another ring and proposed right back to Fitzner. How cute is that? Fitzner said she thought it was a joke at first because it was the kind of thing that you only see in Christmas movies. (laughs) She accepted the proposal to the cheers of nearby skaters, and there is video of this happening if you want to see that. I've got a link to that in the show notes That's for today. That's adorable. I think that really is. And, and there are people who put a lot of time and effort into making sure they have the perfect proposal. I am not one of those people. <laughs> no, you aren't. We, my wife and I have been married for 22 years, and I kind of feel like I ripped you off because I didn't really propose until the day before our wedding. Because you reminded me shortly before that that I didn't really propose. What I did is New Year's Eve, 1999, as it was turning to 2000, I said, hey, this would be a really good year to get married, wouldn't it? You'd always know how many years you've been married. She goes, yeah, it would. At the time, she was a travel agent. I said, you should book a trip somewhere. We should get married someplace awesome. And she did. And then later, she's like, wait a minute. You never even asked me to marry you. (laughs) You just told me. So uh, I pretended like the ring didn't get resized in time, so we were going to go without the ring. But I really did get it. I had to smuggle it to Jamaica. I don't want to tell you how I did that. (laughs) No, really, I just just put it in a different bag. But uh, I smuggled the ring to Jamaica, and I proposed to her on the beach the day before we were wed. So... So you got your proposal. Yes, I did. All right. Hey, it's time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great day. If you want to read uh, the story about that good news, not the one I just shared, but the one before that, the one on the ice, it's at the bottom of the page in the show notes for today at johnandheidyshow.com.